famine in the land. And, and did you and you heard that you heard it that it's a famine not of of food or of uh, thirst for water, but it, rather it is a famine that is coming. That is, and I do believe when I say this that I'm talking about America. That there is a famine coming of hearing the word of God. Now, what I did just now by by saying I want you all to have access to this and your friends and your family to have access to right now media is because within there is a lot of Bible teachers teaching uh, that 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 God is great, that God is in control, that there is a, that there is hope in this, and that and, and preaching the word of God. There's a, a whole lot that does what deals with books of the Bible by teachers that are phenomenal teachers. And so I encourage you to, to use it as much as you can, and, uh, and God bless you for it. But let it spill over to those around you. And that's the purpose, is you, you don't have to keep it for just yourself. You can give it away, and all you've got to do is, is go through those, those things. So now, with all that, just understand the famine is coming in, the land, in our land. And it's the famine of hearing the Word of God. Notice it's not a famine of not having the Word of God. The Word of God has always been there. It has always been a, a, the Word that has brought to man. It is man that causes himself a famine of not taking it and believing it and, and being able to uh, have this access to this. It says they'll wander from sea to sea, from north to east, and they'll run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord, but they won't find it. That's, a, that's where the famine comes in. And as we study today, I want you to know it's up to us as Christians to encourage them to know the word of God, to hear the word of God. And as we talked a little bit in Sunday school today, it doesn't mean you have to make them hear. It, may, it means, honestly, that you are a watchman on the wall for that reason. And, and so for that, I looked at Ezekiel 33, 1 through 5 today. And, I, and, and it says, the word of the Lord came to me. Ezekiel's talking and he says, a word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, if I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from among them and make him their watchman, and if he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet, there's your shabar, blows the trumpet and warns the people, then if any who hears the sound of the trumpet does not take warning and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But if he had taken warning, he would have saved his life. You see, you and I are watchmen on the wall. I'll get into this a little bit more in, 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 as we talk. But you and I are watchmen. A lot of people want to just say, okay, that's the preacher's job. He's supposed to lead us. He's supposed to do this. It's true. I'm supposed to lead you. You know what I'm supposed to lead you into biblically? I'm supposed to lead you into knowledge so that you can do the, 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 the evangelism. Truly, the pastor stands as a, as, a, as a watchman to speak to his people, but the intent is so that you will gain strength enough to go outward and to say something when you're in that situation. Me too. Because the word comes through me and it affects me a lot of times way deeper than it does you. You remember, you're listening to this sermon for this for today. I've listened to this sermon for weeks getting ready for this. And, and it just brews up and it comes up and it comes up and it comes up. So the watchman has a responsibility. And I, if, if you would take that, I blow the shabar. The, the, our land is in trouble. We are in deep, deep trouble. It is not just the government's fault. It's the fact that we have allowed this to take place. A lot of people say, yeah, but, but I didn't vote for this. No, we didn't. And that's your standard of saying, uh, I, I stood against it, but it's still 50% of America today does not believe the tenets of the Word of God. 
I know that because I see how, how, how the, the political realm is right now. They say about 50%. Well, 50% is a large number, folks. 50% have to, that we can't change them, but we have a God who can. So what do we do? We stand. And we stand for the things like what we stood for a while ago. I, I, the abortion issue, the uh, uh, illicit sexual issues that are out there. I'm not going to just name just one because it's stupid to just name one. They're all sin. Amen. They're all uh, uh, bringing us to destruction. And so it's up to us to not only hear from the pulpit, the Shafar alone, it's for us to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in, the, in the community when we're talking to somebody and say, yeah, but God's word says that is blowing the ship up, okay? So let's look at some things about Amos and what he said. Uh, when he said there's a famine in the land, notice a few things. Number one, he was fearless. He was not tickling their ears. Rather, he was telling them the truth. That's something we have to do. It doesn't matter whether it's accepted or not. Just say the truth, Okay. The, he was a faithful, number two, he was a faithful watchman on the wall, the way he was supposed to be. Uh, and there's where that son of man, I, 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 you know, I've made you this is a different, uh, different reading. This is Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19. And he says, I have made you a, a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear the word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If, he, if, if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. You, and you give him no warning or speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life. That wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. The, the fact is, is, is that we are... You can't play Christianity. You cannot just say, I'm a Christian, and then not live it. If you can, eat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out and I'm going to say, if you can say you're a Christian and feel good about sin in your life and continue it, you better examine whether you truly are a Christian or not. Because a Christian cannot live in active sin. Okay, so be warned. He says it's it's simple. It's this simple. If you warn somebody and they ignore you, it's not your fault. Go on, you did your job. If you warn them and they turn, rejoice with them and try to carry them a little further. If you warn them and they say no and they, and it ruins their life, it's not your fault. Can I just speak to parents for just a second? An awful lot of times when parents. Go through guilt over their kids going away from the Lord. Listen, I have been there. I have experienced seeing my own flesh and blood turn and walk away. And it's disheartening. And I pray for you every day. You need to know that. Because it's that serious. But listen to this, will you, from the Word of God. If you train up a child in the way he should go, he will not depart from it. It's in his life for the rest of his life. You've done your job. If it continues and you continue to warn, you've done your job. It, you cannot be the Holy Spirit in their life. You cannot make decisions come to them that are prompted in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit can do that. So what you can you do is you can gently tell them the truth and love them and pray for them and sick the Holy Spirit on them. <laughs> you know, the, the, was, who was it, Moody, that used to call the Holy Spirit the hound of heaven? You know, sick the, <laughs> sick the Holy Spirit on them and let him move into their lives and change their lives. You can't do it, but you can be on that watchman level. And so, you know, when, when we, Amos was telling the truth. So what do we do? Well, C.H. Spurgeon gave us a hint whenever he said of John Bunyan, 
to the writer of Pilgrim's Progress, who spent most of his adult life in prison for preaching the gospel. He would preach the gospel and they'd get mad at him and throw him in, in, the, in, in the prisons in London. And he would preach in the prisons until they threw him back out on the street. And then he'd preach again until they threw him back in jail. Why? Because this is what Spurgeon said. If you were to cut him, he would bleed scripture. <laughs> That's why he could do what he did. He studied and he listened and he learned and he heard from God on a constant basis until... Like he said, if you cut John Bunyan, he'd bleed scripture. He, he, you couldn't run him out. You couldn't kill him. You couldn't do anything to shut him up. Because the word of God was in his life, and I want that for all of us too. The truth is, a famine is coming to America. But I want you to think about this. Now, I'm, I'm a, an amendment to person to the court, and I think I sit in good company. But listen, we are so concerned about the government going to take away our guns. But what are we going to do when the government takes away your Bible? When the Word of God becomes illegal, what are you going to do? It's pretty easy to stand back on something and say, well, yeah, I think I'd stand there. But listen, if, if we are commanded by God to preach the Word of God openly to all creatures everywhere and it becomes illegal to do so will we be John Bunyan's will we preach until they throw us in prison and preach there will we be Paul's will we be Peter's all of those men spent time in prison and in the stocks and by the way the stocks if you've never studied that out that was a torture that I don't know how I would handle. I can't hardly sit down or stand up. Much less putting your feet and ankles into a board that latches, and it has a set of a latches above it so that their head and their, and their hands were through the top, and it latched down, and they left you there for weeks. They'd come in and put food in front of you. How you're supposed to eat it? They didn't care. They fed you. You just didn't need it. You see, I, they, were, they were tortured for their faith. They were tortured for the Word of God. And my question to us is, what are you going to do when God's Word is made illegal and there is a famine in the land and people won't even hear you when you say, but I know what the Bible said. It said this. Listen, to say that, can you honestly say you have fed yourself enough Bible so that you know what it says. I'm not talking about having to be able to, to, to quote every one of them. I'm telling you, is the Bible so rich in you that you know what to say to someone who is in need? Famine in the land is due to sin, number one, in our land, and willful ignorance of God's word. Oh man, you, can, you cannot believe the conversations I have had on Facebook, trying to tell someone, you're wrong, this is not going to have them say, oh no, that's, you're wrong, that's not true. Uh, I had one lady tell me that, you know, the devil wasn't, the Satan wasn't real, but he, Satan is a bad intent in all of our hearts. And that's who he, that's where, that, no, it's not what God's word says. See, in, in saying that, that we, we can't know that we're saved. I've had conversations with that. I, people that people that want to argue over everything. But you know what? I feel like the watchman. I see the enemy coming. And I've got to blow this apart. Whether it's sick people in, in, in there. Hear it and, and run to rescue. Or whether they just ignore it. That's their choices. But it's up to you and me. No one, can you imagine, no one hearing the word of God. Jeremiah 6.10 says, To whom can I give warning? Who will listen when I speak? Their ears are closed and they cannot hear. They scorn the word of the Lord. They don't want to listen at all. Can I say, a prophet maybe was prophesying to our day and age too? 
In Zechariah 7, 12, they made their hearts dumb and hard, lest they should hear the law. And the words that the Lord of hosts had sent to, to by his spirit through the former prophets. Therefore, great anger came from the Lord of hosts as I called, and they would not hear. So they, so they called, and I will not hear. I, listen, I don't know how, how that affects you, but to, to think that we come to a point somewhere down the road where people are saying, we do not want to hear the word of God. We do not want to hear what God says. And when that happens, to know that God turns to them and says, then go ahead and ask, but I won't hear your, your pleas. I won't hear them from you. A lot of people want preachers just to, to, to just preach that warm and cuddly feeling, you know, and be, and be happy with, with just saying nice things. And don't, don't get into all of this. Listen, that is not long the Shabbat. That's seeing the enemy coming and going down to try to cuddle him and pet him. You cannot do that. As Christians, we have to say what the Word of God says. I, as a pastor, and I would add you as laymen and, and you as deacons and, and servants and, 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 and have a part of any kind in our church, all of us, called by God, and I mean that includes everyone. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, therefore called by God, must hear the words of God, for all I hear, all to hear, I understand Jeremiah when he says in Jeremiah 29, if I say I will not mention him or speak anymore in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, I cannot. See, you have to accept the fact that Christians, all of us, and especially us leaders, but Christians, all of us together, must have such a burning desire to see a person come to Christ, that if we shut our mouths, it would be like fire in our bones, and it burn us from the inside out. That's dedication. Just as Amos, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, C. H. Spurgeon, John Bunyan, just as all of these men have, have shown us how to walk, I am driven to speak his truth. Maybe someone would, someone would ask, what, what, what's the, what is truth? How, many, you know, how do you know that the Bible is true? How do you know that that this is true or that's true. As long as it lines up with God's word, you're guaranteed it's true. Whether it's favorable to other people to hear or not. If they ask what is truth, it reminds me of Pilate. Standing before Jesus and he asked him, what is truth? Did he understand what he was doing? No, because the Savior had already said, I am the truth. Jesus asked what is truth. Jesus, and he didn't say this to him, but in a sense he, he could have easily said it to him. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You see, Jesus is truth. And Pilate was standing right there in front of truth saying, mockingly, who knows what truth is? The Word of God answers and says that it is truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through the truth. Your word is truth. That tells me that the word of God is truth. And there's, there's an old poem called the Ordination of Deacon. I can't remember the, what the guy's name was. It's an old southern deacon being ordained. And they asked him a question in this poem. They said, they said, do you, does you believe the scriptures? And he says, I believe the scripture. He picked up his Bible. He says, from cover to cover. Because it says, the Holy Bible. <laughs> I like that. The thing is, is the scriptures say to you, the truth shall set you free. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
If you truly want to live in freedom, and I say this to America right now, if you truly want to live in freedom, we must realize that it is only when we live by God's every word that we can live in freedom. Amen. Our country will never know true freedom until they know Jesus Christ. You will never experience true freedom, freedom from your addictions, freedom from your, your lusts and your, and your evil that comes in here. You can never be free of that until you have Jesus Christ because he says, I am the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is every word, every word of God, every jot, every tittle. And, you know, that's the I, that's the dot over the I, or the crossing of the T, if you want to put it in our language. He inspired into the hearts of men who wrote the Bible. You see, they didn't just write the Bible because they felt like it. The, the Bible says of itself that it, they were moved by the very Word of God. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All Scripture is breathed out by God. It's inspired by God. And profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Can I show you that again? It is God-breathed truth. And in it, you have to understand, with it you can teach. You say, I don't know how to teach. No, no, no. sorry. The Bible says that the Word of God will move you to be able to teach It'll take you for correction. In other words, if you if you are if if you see somebody wandering down the road and they're wandering off the road, and you go and tell them, "No, come back. This is the road." Okay, that is the that is the reproof. You've told them, "No, this isn't the right way." The correction is you tell them, "No, go come back to the road," and then train them while you walk along the road how to stay in the road. That's the problem. That's what every man needs to be. That's what every woman needs to be. As a Christian, we need to be able to live 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. But what has happened? Why, why have we done where we've gone? Isaiah 59, 14 tells us a little, a little secret. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the public squares and uprightness cannot end. King James, I think, was said that truth has fallen in the street. You know why the truth has fallen in the street? Because we Christians are letting opportunities go by and not telling people, thus saith the Lord. See, it, it isn't thus say Joe Sparks. They, 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 they ignore that every time. Who, who the heck does he? But when you say, thus says the Lord, the creator of all the universe, the one who brought all this into play, he wrote a book of love for you, and he says in that book, this. And when you do that, you've taken it off your hands. You're no longer responsible. That person is responsible. The Holy Spirit has said that when you do that, he moves into that person's heart, and he speaks to him the word of God. I've had, I've, 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 trained, I've taught training of, of evangelism on how to talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. And, and I always get confronted with this one question. What if I do it wrong? I have news for you. It's not your book. It's not your word. It's not your power. It's the word of God empowered by the Holy Spirit of God, delivered by stupid human lips that they can't say it right, and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will then take it and rearrange it in that man's mind to where it made sense. You can't do it wrong. You can try your best to do it right and say the wrong thing, and I guarantee you the Holy Spirit who is over all and empowers all and is in his all power will give that person the understanding through your failure. As a matter of fact, I know when, I know in school I used to hate taking tests because I, I I felt like I was always getting the answer wrong. 
And what no one taught me, and I, I love going to school here, but what no one ever taught me is that when you get something wrong on a test, that teaches you what is right, what is correct. So going out and doing nothing is not the answer. Going out and doing something to tell somebody about Christ and they'll laugh at you is not your failure, it's theirs. And the lesson is there to bring them to Christ. All you have to do is pray. So let's, let's face some things about America right now. The Supreme Court's almost succeeded in banning the Bible from all public places, places as a nation. And without the nation, without the free, the, the Bible, the nation is without true freedom. So every time we see them pulling down or taking apart these monuments that have the Ten Commandments on it, they think they are destroying what God says. But the truth is, is they are just, they're showing us the, what's coming in America. Number one, abortion. Is caused, has caused America to be guilty of the shedding of innocent blood. I don't care how you look at it, there is nothing more innocent than a baby that has not been born yet that is growing in that womb. They have never done anything wrong. You say you didn't feel my ribs when he kicked me all the time. <laughs> You're part of the you're part of the plan, and you brought, listen. You brought it into this world. I like I like that picture. I like that picture that I saw of this woman's abdomen. All you see is about this much of it, and there is a footprint coming through the wall. And, and they took a picture of it. You know, they're they're not easy to bring. I realize, but they are so innocent. They were under God's watch care. When you study God, He says He knit every bit of them together in their mother's womb. God Himself knit them together. And we say kill. You talk about serving mammon instead of God. Mammon being the, 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 old, the, the god of commerce or the god of how to make money. And even the Navajos have in their, in, their, in their religion, they have the fact that whenever the, the, the great failure come upon them, and I'm not quoting what they, what exactly the way they would put it, but the one thing I did get out of it is the, when sin came into the world, it was because they, they sent down a, a, a stork, I think it was, and, and he brought up the way to make money. And it destroyed everything. It destroyed the peace and the harmony and everything. That's in the, in the Navajo religion. You know what? It's not far from wrong in the sense that the way to make money affects everything on our world too. And this is one of them. And that's what he said. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the way to make money. Because either you'll worship one and you'll hate the other, or else you'll hate the one and worship the other. Sanctity of marriage is, on the, is, on, is also on the battle zone. The sanctity of marriage between one man and one woman has been now condemned. It is going to be soon that I see in Scripture one of the warnings of the end times is that they would forbid them to be married. Guess what is coming, people? It's coming fast. They're going to declare your marriage is all null and void. That's the thing to do. <laughs> well, well, there's so much arrogance in, in, in the way that the, these laws come in. I have to laugh sometimes. One woman one and one woman together forever. That's God's plan. Okay? You got that? Illicit sexual acts all over the world are now legalized, but more than legalized, they're accepted on all levels. Now, if you don't subscribe to agreeing with these perversions that are out there, and I'm not going to name just one because I guarantee you, it's not just homosexuality, it's not, it, it's abortion, 
I mean, sorry, it, it is, it is, it is, uh, I got the wrong word stuck in my head. Adultery. It, it is adultery. It is the, the, the running around with, with, uh, against your wife. It's fornication. It is all kinds of illicit things that come up. All of those are bringing America to its face. And I hope that when they get there, they just cry out to God, but I'm afraid they won't. Christians themselves are increasingly lenient towards immorality of all kinds. You know, I'm not talking about someone coming in the church that, that needs to hear the Word of God to change their lives, here, being welcome here. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that I have heard with my own ears Christians laud and applaud the things that are violations of God completely in this area. And it's supposed to be that we just accept it. It's going to be expected in the near future that you will accept all things. And I, my answer is, no, I'm going to accept God's word. God's word does not agree with you, so do what you need to do. I'm not going to do it. I don't know how many of you know, and I don't care which direction you go on believing on taking the, taking the, the immunization for COVID, I don't know how many of you know that one of the guys that was arrested at the lot at the and I didn't agree with the way they treated the, the capital, but he was arrested there was the was the head of Cowboys for Christ. And a lot of people don't know that he has spent every day since then in solitary confinement for one reason. Because he won't take the, he won't take the immunization. Because he feels it against it. He feels like God told him not to. He's spent every day since then in, in isolation. They won't even give him charges. They won't even they won't even tell him what he's in for. You think we're still there? Well, I gotta hurt. So we have entered a season when Paul would charge to each one of us. I charge you all in the presence of, the, of God in Christ Jesus. Who, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. In other words, when it's, when it's good and when it ain't good. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, and with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. Here it comes. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As, you, as for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your, your ministry. And here's where I was going to go, and maybe I'll just leave it until next week. And this is the, this is the, this is the, no, I don't have that much. The, the nation without the Bible is a nation without foundation. What we what we seen earlier, we sang some verses. And it says, uh, you know, Matthew seven twenty six and twenty seven are, are rights from that. Everyone who hears the word these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall. There's that song we sang a while ago. See, it, we, from little kids, we sing this song that when the rain's coming down, the floods coming down. You know, I can still do the hand motions. Now I don't like doing hand motions. You know, and, and, and you know, and the house went splat. You know, because if you build on anything other than the Word of God, you built on sand, and your life is going to go into the gutter. The sands of religion and popular opinion. The fact is, we what we need to do is be built on the solid rock, the rock of God's word, and the fact of God's word. A couple of things to, to, to end with here. It is the height of arrogance and disobedience to sit around and argue the nuances of God's word when simply obedience is all that's required. We can sit around and argue as churches back and forth as to, well, I think this and I think this and you. 
Put it all away. There's one thing that matters. Obedience to the Word of God. Christ is the foundation stone. 1 Peter 2, 7 and 8 said that, he, that the stone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. See, you, you stand on the Word of God and you build on the Word of God and I guarantee you people are going to hate you for it. Eventually. They stumbled because they disobeyed the Word and they were destined to do that. Psalm 11, 8, 11 3 says that the foundations are destroyed. What can the righteous do? A nation without the Bible is a nation without faith. And my Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Everett Hale said this, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. What I do, can do, I should do. And with the help of God, I will do. There is our challenge. You may be just one man, but if you do it for God, you are a watchman on the wall. And you blow that ship on and say, there's, there's, there's danger coming. I guarantee you, God's power will work with your power to warn those people. And the nice thing about it is, you don't have to continue badgering that person. The Holy Spirit's going to do that for you. So, we're left with a question. We're left with a statement, and that is, I, the things I cannot, you know, there's things I cannot do, but I can do something. Put it to God. And let's watch God work out of this church like never before. Don't be satisfied with the, with the past. Our church needs to be the one that is noted in the future as standing as a bull of the word of God. Let's go to the Lord.